Hello everyone, I'm BVG Hill. Welcome back once again to another episode of Mass Effect. Um, we're going to start this episode off with some conversations with the crew, because there should be some things to talk about after doing the first major mission since getting the Normandy. We rescued Liara last episode from, I forget what the name of the planet is, but she was in a Prothean ruin and then a Krogan leading the Geth tried to kill us. I found out that I suck so much at the first Mass Effect and had to turn the difficulty down to easy like a little worthless noob. But hopefully come the start of Mass Effect 2 I'll be able to turn it up again because I did do a run or not the hardest difficulty but the next one down of Mass Effect 2 and 3 a lot of the combat mechanics changed and I think for the better um, and the squad AI got so much better in Mass Effect 2 as well they don't just like, in this game, you tell them to take cover, and they take cover, and they still die in five seconds. I don't know if I'm missing some major, you know, strategic point in the combat in this game or whatever, but whatever. It is what it is. I hope you guys aren't watching this for some super skilled MLG playthrough. I'm playing through it because the story means a lot to me. I just felt like playing through it again, so I thought I'd play through on here. But anyways, let's get to these conversations before we waste too much time. And don't get anywhere in this episode. What's up, Caden? How's it hanging, brother? Commander, do you have a minute? E sure. I always make time for my officers. What's up? Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the council? Yeah, Sorry, tell me about Commander. It. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. I agree. The council Trust doesn't me. want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but. I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. You would think, Funny, but... We finally get out here, and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. It's a cute way to... Uh, an old-fashioned view. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure a man's future in space? Yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid. Don't take that as flirting, it's not. Prove himself worthy of a woman he loves, or, you know, for justice. Or maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry Fair if enough. I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. It's all right. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse Forced. results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumor some kids grew up with. You doubt? Yeah, it probably wasn't accidental. Is there some Let's question be real about how here. you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. So Caden here was one of the first. 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Tell Jump me about Zero Jump is Zero. The station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. Do you have any there friends there? There were other kids there? in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Time to talk. And you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bowl every night after dinner, play cards or network games. Oh yeah. There was get some gaming. Rana, who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. 
like you, I guess. Ma'am. Did you love her? You loved her. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But you never acted never felt on together. it. Training, you know. Well, Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. I want to know my crew, Caden. Don't insult me. Come we on. We have to depend on each other in combat. I like knowing what kind of man I have at my back. I understand, ma'am. I won't let you down. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? To some degree. Of course. But I don't enjoy it with everyone. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah, I'd like that. <laughs> The only thing I don't like about uh, the first game with the romance options is they make it almost impossible for f a female shepherd to not flirt with Caden. Like, almost impossible. Like, come on. I mean, he's cool and all, but I don't know. He's no Liara or no Garrus. I mean, come on. Or Tally, even. What's up, Liara? How's it going? Commander. Ooh, are you coming eye there. to check up on me? I was worried. You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. The best of You're the in best. Good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. Everyone on the ship, really. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm mention. just glad we got there in Don't time. Don't mention it. No problem. So am I. Daily business for Shepard. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. I know. Don't I worry, know Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. Shepard has a, a way with people. You say that, Commander. Thank you. Let's talk about Tell you. Tell me Come about on. yourself, Liara. Me? Spill the beans. I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Do you get lonely out there, Leora? Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau. I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well... That is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes I just need to get away from other people. You don't I like can, other people? I can relate. I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. It's a good thing you didn't follow her now, right? Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. You're simply following your dreams. Following your dreams is not foolish, people. All children rebel against their parents. It's a natural part of growing up. Uh -huh. You share the wisdom of the matriarch, Shepard. That is exactly what Benezia said when I told her of my decision. But there was more to it than that. I felt drawn to the past. The Protheans were these wondrous, mysterious figures. I wanted to know everything about them. That is why I find you so fascinating. You were marked by the beacon on Eden Prime. You were touched by working Prothean technology. Oh, I'm fascinating, eh? Sounds Ooh. like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! I did not mean to insinuate. Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. <laughs> I only meant Chill. that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> Relax. Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess. How could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. No. Please, no. just pretend this conversation never happened. It's endearing. Come on. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand Exactly. It. 
She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Maybe she's just evil. Yeah, Leora will like to hear this that. Hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council. And we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Living a thousand plus years on average. Makes sense they were the first to discover the Citadel. Imagine like the what? knowledge you could Most of the inaccuracies are centered around years. our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Cool. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. Which we would have experienced if that little bit of the cutscene hadn't have been cut out last time. For goodness sake. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. What about that age difference? You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? A few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Who was your father? <laughs> do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Don't know who? You can do that. I mean, it's kind of common sense. How did they survive before they discovered other alien species? Benezia never told you her partner's name? Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a... Pure blood, though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. You don't know that. Could have Maybe been some other outstanding you, situation. Maybe something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. Good talk. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. forgot how long it takes to talk to everyone in between missions. I might have to, like, dub this as, like, talking time and have it, like, almost a separate series or something. I still have Garrus, Rex, and Tally to talk to yet. So it's going to be... This might be the whole episode, actually. It's just me talking to people. So I think I might just title this, like, Talking Time 1. And, like, fill the description with, if you don't like long conversations and lots of backstory, then please, then don't watch this episode. Just wait for the next one. 
feel like that's probably a safe way to do it. So that way it keeps it all contained Sarah and separated. Gone. Yes, we do, Rex. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. When did you meet him, Rex? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. Fair enough. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. Mm. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. And? What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. What was the cargo? What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Whose ship was it? There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. That's it? That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Shit. Since we're already, since I've already made up my mind to dub this as lore and conversations episode, we're sure not getting any stronger. Might as well just go full. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. Because I know there's got to be people out there like me that love that revel in the lore and conversations, character building, stuff like that, of a game like this. What can you tell me about the Genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one, and no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? I suppose that's a good point. You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. Well, then they're not that worried about it. Are, Shepard. Just saying. I can't change that. Nobody can. All right. So long, Rex. Take it easy. Shepherd. Try not to be too depressing over here. All right, we still got Ashley, too. Shit. Commander? Can we talk? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? Sure. I, I was hoping to get a minute of your time off the record. Shoot. I keep an open-door policy. <laughs> if you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm... I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. Not Tally? With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? They may not serve the Alliance Chief, but they're allies. 
At least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust aliens? I don't want any don't racism. Trust the allies? Speciesism. I'm not sure I'd call the council this, races uh, allies. Ship. We Thank you. Humanity. I mean, we have to learn to rely on ourselves. Need allies. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. Of course they will. Not necessarily. I don't see that as inevitable. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. I've heard this before. You sound like one of those terra firma party pamphlets, Chief. Terra firma is a pack of jackals. The founders had ideals. These days they just play off xenophobia and bigotry. I hope my reasons are more rational. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. What's your service? It doesn't sound though? like you've worked with aliens before. No, ma'am. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. Just one rotation? That's odd. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. You have to work with aliens, Ashley. It's just... Tell me about the military family, firm, family first. On Come on. Anybody in your family I'd have heard of? Couldn't say, Commander. So why are you out here? Just trying to get away from Earth? Hmm. Serve the Alliance to see space, wouldn't you? Earth's seen better days. Lots of pollution, too many people. Uh, people are trying to fix it, but... But right now, it's not the best place to be. I guess without a family, you had no reason to stay. You have to work with aliens. All right, They're cool. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're gonna have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Turian, I'll ask which cheek. Thanks. I don't think kissing Turians will be necessary. <laughs> you never know, Commander. <laughs> how are we doing? And then I'll leave What's you be. What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? I believe her. I think she's being straight with us. Or at least I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Hey, want me to ask her about her sex life? Might be illuminating. <laughs> don't be cruel. I don't think she's used to teasing, good-natured or otherwise. No fun, Commander. <laughs> Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. All right. Dismissed, Chief. Keep it real. Ma'am. Keep it real. All right, Garrus. Command. How are you? What's the scoop? Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? Hmm. That's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like and what? And those are? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was C-Sec, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. I can understand it's that. It's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. No, you won't. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger for the same reasons. You're better than Saren. You were asked to be a Spectre. Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. 
He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. Too bad. Not all Spectres are like Saren, you know. Of course not. But Saren's not gonna play by our rules. CSEX rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Yeah, that I can agree with. You're a quick learner, Garrus. We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. I agree with that. To beat someone with no restrictions, you gotta have no restrictions yourself. Sometimes. Alright, Tally. Oh, hello, Shepard. What's wrong, girl? Are you okay? What's happening? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me. Especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? It's too quiet to sleep. The silence wakes I you get up. that. I need to have Back a fan buzzing flotilla, next to me to sleep. The last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. You're homesick. I couldn't wait to get away <laughs> from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Homesick. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have till it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. Tell me about your people. Let's get some our backstory. Lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. The Conclave? The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. Democracy, so oh the yeah. power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. Checks and balances. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. What to get? I want to know more about the gap. We know what to get. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know tough, is the story tough, of their uh, origins. Tough break. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Tell me. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. 
Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. Mm-hmm. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So the Geth share brain power? One mind. Many of the Geth's Hive logic brain. systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. I have mind. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. Mm. What made them rebel? Interesting. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? And that's when you know things As are going imagine, south. This caused a near panic among my people. So what happened next? What did you do? It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. They were defending themselves. Yeah, you can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth yeah. would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space. Exile, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Well, you know, they did defend themselves. Start to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. No we offense. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get so worked up. Most Quarians tend to have pretty strong sorry. opinions about my bad. the Geth. Didn't mean to, uh, offend you. Pilgrimage we already heard a lot about. I should go. And, on See that you? note, as I suspected... <laughs> That's all we have time for. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm gonna brand this as like a like a sub season, a sub series kind of to Mass Effect. Like we're gonna have the main game, but I'm just gonna have the normal titling procedure. But for this, I'm gonna call it like Talking Time One, um, and I'll let I'll I'll let you know in the description. You know, this is conversations, backstory, and lore in between major story missions if you don't want to see that don't watch this episode if you do want to see that then please by all means watch the episode i hope it works out i mean i've always wanted something like this for longer games that i watch let's plays of on youtube i've always wanted to see you know more conversation and i feel like this is kind of a cool way to do it but anyways um i hope you enjoyed this and if you did 
make sure to hit that like button down below if you really enjoyed it. Oh, another thing too. I'm not going to be able to talk much in these because, I mean, I don't want to sit here and talk over um, the characters in the game. That would be stupid and defeat the purpose of it entirely. So I'll, you know, I'll say a few words here and there. But for the most part, it's just going to be straight conversation, straight story, straight backstory, lore, all that fun stuff. Uh, so keep that in mind if you want to keep watching this sub-series that I've just created in my mind. <laughs> but anyways, as I was saying, make sure you hit that like button below if you liked it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button also down below if you really liked it. And feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought, what you liked, what you didn't like, and any suggestions for games that you would like to see me play in the future. And last, but certainly not least, if this video just blew your mind, then most definitely be sure to share this video with your friends, your family, your loved ones, random people you can meet on the street, or the internet, whatever floats your boat. And I will see all of you in the next one. See you later.